Hey everybody, this is Chris at Zenlark Reptiles. Thank you for joining me once again. How's everybody doing? I hope you guys are doing well and you're getting better, going back to work and things are opening. Um, hopefully you guys will be able to get haircuts, get your nails done and uh, things going back to normal. This video is gonna be a little bit late today and the reason is, is that I just got back to work. This is my first day in work in a long time. I've been sitting home for two months. Um, Tell you the truth, I actually did get a new job. I was working at Canopy Country. I did get the opportunity to have a management position in a grocery store. I've spent many years in grocery and it's just better benefits, a little more pay, and uh, it works out better for me. The only issue is I don't get my money through Friday uh, time, but everything else is winning. Anyways, before we get started today, um, if you guys are new here, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. That notification bell keeps you in the loop, gives you a notification saying, hey, I got a new video out. Also, hit that like button. Um, if you guys get anything from these videos, hitting that like button really helps me out. Just helps me further along in YouTube, and that's all I ask, nothing too crazy. Don't ask you to sell your soul just to give me a little like. Anyways, so before I get going, I'm gonna address something I did last week. I did a video about places that are safe to buy, um, like from online reptile stores, and I got some hate for that, and I'm gonna address that. The thing is, is that I think it's always better to buy from hobbyists, um, because people that are hobbyists or they do this for a living, um, like say like Ozzy Boyd or Jessica Boca, or just your average Joe that breeds their snakes and sells them, they're gonna treat their animals a lot better than a big box store. Um, but the box stores that I recommended, I bought animals from them from the past, um, not recently, I guess a few here and there, but um, they've always said healthy animals and they're always uh, gave me deliveries and I never had no animals have any issues. That being said, they do, the reason why I'm saying this, they do use the right substrate. They actually have the pet in the right, you know, uh, uh, requirements to keep them. There's like a lot of places like Petco, it's Pet Smart. When you go down there, the animals look skinny and they look like that. a lot of times they have them in the wrong substrate. The Pet Smart and Petco here always put the leopard geckos, the bearded dragons, and also the ball pythons in the wrong substrate. I am not 100% sure of all of them that way, but from my experience, from the ones I've seen in Washington, um, they are usually set up wrong and the humidity is wrong. Um, I always see stuck shed. Also, um, they look always on the skinny side and they don't look like they've been eating. Where um, I know these places, the animals uh, look chunky, they look like they're eating, they look healthy, um, but always buy from a hobbyist if you can. But again, if you can't find it, I feel like these places are okay, but again, that's my personal opinion. I'm not an advocate for online box stores, but if you buy from an online box store, you should realize that they're trying to make money. They're trying to pay their overhead, they're trying to pay their employees, and uh, as long as they keep the animals healthy, I'm okay with it. Comparing a hobbyist and a box store is like saying, uh, if I take my kids to the daycare, I expect them to have the exact same uh, love. I want them to take care of my kids like they're their own. Um, Cause when a hobbyist breeds them up, say like Aussie Boyd's, they're gonna have a lot more love for those snakes cause they created them and they bred them and they're gonna take top notch care of them. Um, as long as a box store, which I see as a daycare, put them in the right uh, requirements, I'm okay with it. Okay, let's get started. Today I have another combo that I think is amazing and it's actually a pretty easy combo to hit. Um, there's more than one way of hitting it and what that is is the banana leopard clown. Um, it's only got one recessive gene so it's not too hard to get to, especially if you wanna drop down the money. You can get hit it really quick, um, but let's talk about it. The banana ball um, was discovered in 2003 I don't know who actually first produced it, but that was the first day it's produced. Um, you can go to a lot of places online. It says 2003, but it does not say who produced it, but it was a big success. It actually was selling for like $26,000, $30,000. People were paying a lot of money for them. Now, you know, they don't uh, sell for that much anymore. Um, also, they are sex link. I'm not gonna do a long video about this. There's a lot of places online you can check out that talks about sex uh, linked animals. But that is only one thing, but it's not a big deal, but it can be. They are really easy to find in the morph market. The females gonna cost more than the males. The females are probably looking around 450 to 500 bucks. Um, the males are usually about two to three. And uh, they're really beautiful, really colorful. And especially when you're starting out, you can get a colorful snake. 
um, that you don't have to drop a lot of money on. I personally like Ultramel better, but it's easier to hit banana than it is Ultramel because Ultramel being a recessive gene. Now let's talk about one of my favorite genes that I haven't really mentioned a lot about is the leopard gene. I have leopard downstairs and I do love it. Uh, I love the pattern of it. The leopard ball python was discovered by Peter Call Reptiles. Um, I don't know what year. As a single gene, they're pretty cheap to get on Morph Market or other places. The females run about two to three hundred dollars. The males about 150 to about 175, maybe 200. Um, they're easy to get a hold of. Uh, them and GHI are some of my favorite pattern morphing uh, genes out there. I just love the crazy pattern. Also, the leopard is a dominant gene. There's not too many out there, but it is one of the few. Um, last but not least, let's talk about the clown. Clown is amazing. It is one of my favorite recessives, but there's only so many out there, and I don't think there's one I, I dislike. I do have favorites. That one is definitely in my top three of, of recessives that I love, is the clown. The clown was uh, discovered in 1999 by VIP, and they are readily available on Morph Market and other places. Um, not that hard to get a hold of. A basic female probably sells for about four to 500. The males, I would say, are in the lower end, probably looking about two to three hundred dollars. Now, how are you going to hit this? Um, I could make a big, long video on how to hit this. The cheapest route I would probably go is with a leopard banana breeding to a visual clown. So what you're going to do is you breed it to them. Um, if you do hit the clown and leopard, you would hold that back uh, for breeding in the future. You'll have a leopard, banana, het, and then later on, about two or three years down the road, you can actually breed it back. Again, um, the sex linking kind of makes it a little bit harder. Uh, depends if you have a male or female uh, making banana. That's the, the lowest I would start out with. Me personally, I try to find a a leopard clown and maybe a banana clown. I would try it that way so I can go further along, but I'm gonna dump a lot more money into it. Uh, like I said before, it's always how much money and how much cost you have. Um, but this is amazing looking snake and it's not crazy expensive, especially if you go with the lower end of getting into it. Um, I think it has a lot of bang for its buck. And actually, um, not that I wanna, not that I wanna talk about all retail, but they actually sells for a lot once you hit it. So even if you have to use the, the cheaper startup costs and it takes you three, four years down the road, I believe this will still actually sell pretty well um, because it is amazing looking snake and it still has that recessive. So um, it's not everybody's gonna be producing it. Um, it might go down some, but it will actually still make you a decent amount of money. Um, right now, they sell for about two to three thousand dollars on Morph Market. I think the average is about twenty-five hundred dollars. Um, so it is actually a nice snake once it you hit it, and it's you know it's actually good for your pocketbook too. Um, even though I don't believe this is all about a pocketbook, it's part about being part of the hobby. Um, there's nothing wrong with actually having snakes that are worth money. And this is for everybody that actually stayed. Um, just letting you know that I'm here to encourage you and um, I definitely think you guys should definitely start breeding and um, putting your combos together and just stay away from the negativity. There is a lot of negativity in the ball python community. I'm not saying everybody is, but there is always that 10% that try to get you down. Um, I do videos all the time, so I get hit all the time. Um, you guys don't see it. I do get messages, and I do get some bad comments. And you know what? I just brush them off. It don't bug me. But if you guys are thinking about starting up, you know what? Just push it away. Don't listen to them. For some reason, people will kind of get become elitist and think they're the only ones that know everything. So they'll sit there and pick apart everything you do. But you know what? Um, this is a great hobby. Um, even can be a great business if you guys just keep on pushing forward. 
Anyways, guys, uh, if you guys wouldn't mind, check out some of my other videos right here. Also, hit that uh, subscribe button. It really helps me out. I love you guys. Stay positive, stay focused, and I will see you next time. Love you. Later.